Hi, my name's Jill. I'm here with the long ground pool behind me, the canoe safari in front of me, and welcome to another episode of Wildlife Weekly. This week we're going to be seeing how some of the animals have been coping with the heat. We'll also be taking a look at some of our birds and their funky looking young. And we'll be talking to Peter who will be telling us how he traps moths here on the reserve. This week has been a real scorcher of a week here at Slimbridge with temperatures staying constantly in the 20s and the birds have really been feeling that. As you can see from this clip, our black-headed gold colony out on South Lake are sticking together and are actually panting just to cool themselves down. The cattle that are grazing out in the estuary have also been feeling the heat and they've taken advantage of their position and have actually joined the avocets by cooling down in the water, which at the moment sounds very tempting. This year has been a particularly good year for tufted ducks on site and if you head over to the South Inga reed bed you'll get a particularly good view of a large crèche of ducklings that are being looked after by an adult close by. The great crested grebes out on the canoe safari in front of me are currently molting in preparation for their winter plumage. So that means their head fans are looking more dull than they were in the spring. On the contrary, their chicks look a lot different and more impressive because they've got the black and white stripes down their neck, which I think looks a little bit like a humbug. So I'm going to hand you over to Pete Cranswick, who is the Head of Species Recovery, and he's going to tell you a little bit about moth trapping. There are about 60 species of butterflies in the UK. By comparison, there are about 2,500 species of moths. All sorts of varieties, all sorts of colours, patterns, shapes and sizes. Because most people don't see moths, you have to put a light trap on at night to see how many there are, their importance is largely overlooked but they're a really important part of the environment and particularly of food webs. They're the main prey, the main food for bats, which are a really important but threatened group of animals in the UK. And they're desperately important as the base of food webs in so many things for birds. We know that birds feed their young on caterpillars, but the figure is that just the blue tits in the UK, just feeding their young each year, get through 35 billion caterpillars. And most of those will be moths so they're really important for the environment. Moth names are great and really fun. Uh, not quite sure why, but there are a lot of moths that are named after cats. There is a puss moth, there are kittens, there are tigers. Uh, they were named by vicars several hundred years ago who were the naturalists of their day. And if you look at this one, this is a, a leopard moth. You can see why it's called a leopard, it's got spots on. It's not actually very common, it's a very nice species to come across. Uh, and you will see a few each year, but I only ever catch one at a time. I'm not sure why. Uh, another great moth that's named along the lines of say what you see is the blood vein. It's just a beautiful moth. It looks more like the painting on a bit of Japanese parchment. Uh, it's a real crowd pleaser. And you see that, that red line uh, across the middle is why it was named as it is. So as part of our Nature Explorers, come along and see the moths that we catch at Slimbridge. Uh, it starts at 11 o'clock every day from Saturday the 26th of July until Friday the 1st of August. Come along, we'll show you what we've caught in the trap overnight. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't hesitate to share it with your friends and followers on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or check our website for further information.